They're coming. They're coming your way. They'll be here soon. Will you be ready? Imagine this, if you will. One night, just summer's eve, you're having a ton of fun with your console, playing Smash Brothers or maybe some other Nintendo 64 game or maybe even PS1. You're just sitting there having the time of your life when suddenly someone or something kicks your console by accident or maybe they trip over the wire and without you really fully understanding what happened, screen corrupts and does a bunch of weird shit that freaks you out so much that you run over the console and unplug it, thinking the evil was contained within the console, whatever was trying to get out. Well, hopefully you didn't do that, because that just sounds like something a caveman would do, aka me, because that's exactly what happened to me as a kid while I was playing Smash Brothers on the Nintendo 64. Everything was corrupted and the noise the TV was making was just hellish and sounded like infinite digital screams. Ugh, I hated it. But stuff like that can happen sometimes in games or consoles, mainly due to an error from the game or perhaps an error from the console itself. Or maybe you bought an illegal version of the game and the console itself is just trying to punish you for trying to feed it garbage. There are a multitude of reasons why these, what I call, kill screens happen. The term kill screen isn't really an official one, but it's one I heard a lot as a QA tester back when I used to do quality assurance for games. Kill screens can happen, like I said, when something isn't functioning right. And if you ever hear your game make this noise, that means there is a critical error that could be potentially damaging your system so I was advised to unplug the console I was working at whenever that happened. And I'm not sure if I can advise that with you because keep in mind I was working with current gen consoles when I was a QA tester so maybe that advice doesn't really work with everything and these were American machines so you know take that with a grain of salt. I was just told to do that. Thankfully that rarely happens with most games nowadays thanks to how advanced technology is now but even with all our advancements that shit can still happen. And I want to focus on that weird and scary stuff that happens with game consoles, you know, the scary sounds that they used to make, as well as the various kill screens, error screens, and boot up screens that haunted us in our youth. Because honestly, it's a bit of a hobby of mine to check out some of the freaky shit that these consoles or games do sometimes, sometimes even in secret. Now, unfortunately, the topic of today was a bit too much, especially since what I'll be talking about tonight has a ton of info on it that is basically needed for a video on its own, so I decided to cut this video up in two separate pieces. Hopefully you guys watch both, and hopefully you enjoy each one. Okay, with that being said, let's talk about the wonderful yet equally horrible boot up screen that is the PlayStation. Good God, I hated the PS1 boot up sound so much. Even now as an adult, that shit still gives me the creeps. I never understood why people always said that it was so nostalgic and calming for them. Like, I get it, it's nostalgic, but I mean, the sound that I always heard from THX's horrible, horrible intro was always nostalgic to me too, but I still hate that thing. Though there is something about the BIOS that I found super interesting while I was looking into it. See. 
It's interesting because there are two unique and somewhat secretive sounds that the PS1 plays as it boots up a game that either is pirated or corrupted. I never knew about this until I started researching for this video, and these two sounds, I'm not even joking, are called Fearful Harmony and Personified Fear. But why? Who would name it this? Well, I gotta give props to whoever named it that, because the sounds these two make are pretty horrible, and that's no hyperbole. The names are appropriate for the sound that they are attached to. Take a listen to Fear for Harmony, which plays when you have a bootleg or pirated disc or a modded console. Yeah, no, seriously, I'm not joking. I would legit would have just thrown out my console if I heard that. Seriously, that is a haunted piece of hardware right there. I ain't dealing with that. But to be more technical, the PS1 is essentially trying its best to read whatever you have inserted it. But the BIOS is failing miserably, making the entire console lag terribly and making the chimes seem much slower than they usually are. There is some speculation as to why exactly Fearful Harmony plays when the console tries to read corrupted data, you know, aside from creeping out kids and making them ever regret modding or pirating games, but apparently, in Japanese culture, strong winds carry evil spirits and disease, so it is believed. So having wind chimes help ward off these negative energies from your home. In a way, the PS1 is playing these sounds in an attempt to protect you from dark and malevolent energies. It might be a bit of a stretch, but I thought that was an interesting enough tidbit that I wanted to mention it. Though most talk and speculation around Fearful Harmony is just that, talk and speculation. Nobody really knows why this sound plays, but others really suggest that it's just the main sound, the boot up sound that is, but just stretched on over. Remember, I did say the boot up was very laggy, so it's playing the same animation that it should, but it's very, very slow, and you can see that in some of the videos that have Fearful Harmony. And of course, we can't forget about the little brother of Fearful Harmony, known as Personified Fear. Seriously, I, I cannot emphasize how weird these names really are. By the way, just to clarify, Fearful Harmony and Personified Fear, these aren't official names given to the files or whatever audio is playing, it's just fan-made names given to these sounds, but still, whoever came up with it, kind of a dick. Anyways, Personified Fear plays only when there's an error reading the disc. The screen goes to black and plays a pretty spooky sound. I hear this one is supposedly a rare sound to hear, but I call bull on that. There's a ton of kids who had these in the 90s, and for the most of us, it was our first disc-based console, meaning most of us probably smudged or scratched our discs because we were idiot kids who didn't really know any better. Seriously, raise your hand if you tried to put your PS1 disc inside of a CD player. I know, I know some of you did that. It's kind of interesting when you really think about it. I like to consider the PS1 a pioneer of horror games, you know? A ton, and I mean a ton of horror classics came straight from the PS1, if not found their footing with the PS1. It's kind of hard to believe that the console that was innovating fear and horror in video games also had its deep, dark secrets with these horrifying sounds that I don't think any of us as kids would ever want to hear. 